What's going on guys? Dan here, DD Speed Shop. As always, we're working on a Tri-5. Uh, so this is the convertible. Convertible. Anyways, I got a pile of sheet metal. I was gonna show you real quick and then we'll start working on it. It was an expensive day. So I just wanna take a minute and thank everyone here who does watch and watches the ads, and comments, and subscribes to the channel. If you haven't, do that. It makes a huge difference for me. Uh, it'll, it affords me to do make terrible decisions like this. Why, why put it in the savings account when you can buy ridiculous sheet metal at inflated American pricing uh, and then pay the shipping on it? That's just as much fun, right? So thanks again for that. Anyways, here's what we got going on. So we got uh, two rockers. These are pricey, they're a couple hundred bucks a piece. Uh, I'll talk Canadian dollars, so I don't know what's 150 or so American. Anyways, so we got rockers for both sides. They're four door rockers, so they're full length. Um, this was the stuff that was kind of important for the actual convertible conversion. Uh, this section right here, it's quite short on the four door hardtop. Obviously, the sedans are the same. Uh, I don't, I guess maybe a two door hardtop's longer. I'm not, I don't know, maybe that's convertible only. I, I'm, not, I'm not an expert. Some guys on the internet were saying they've done this and they've just used the deck lid, skinned it, and then used it to extend it, which is fine. That would probably work, gives it a bit of a shape. This is the proper panel, which then kind of puts everything in line for these side panels. These side panels were a bit of a kick in the teeth because all I really needed was kind of from here ahead. But in actuality, this isn't, the panel isn't meant to be used as a convertible conversion. It's meant to be a quarter panel repair. So I guess the, when I was talking to the guys at uh, Cars, um, they were saying the quarter panel used to be kind of one piece and then it would flip over and go right into the, the trunk area, which may still exist, but now it joins right in the center. Uh, under this trim, it's actually quite ugly. There's, it's just like a seam and it's, well, it's kind of just like that. So it's nothing special. So essentially they kind of sell the quarter panel in two pieces, I guess, to maybe save a few bucks or whatever. So ultimately I'm probably just gonna use the front section and carry on. Uh, this side has an antenna, so it's kind of hard to lay down, but, I think it'll be pretty nice. I'll be able to join it right in the middle under all this uh, trim, so that'll hide a bunch of body work. Once you get this piece out, this will kind of fit where it's gonna be. Obviously, we'll line it up in the trunk. It's not set up properly, the trunk molding, and then alongside here, that'll fit in kind of like that. This will give us our little, I assume this is the indent, where we're gonna put the trim with all the snaps for the convertible kind of cover and whatnot. I assume, I don't know, I guess we'll figure it out. But that'll be nice. You know, I guess all this stuff could have been made. I wasn't too sure on, uh, ultimately on the, the distances and stuff like that. And I kind of fall in love with this thing. I'm not gonna lie. I do want it to be kind of as close to a convertible as possible. Uh, so at the end of the day, this will have the convertible sheet metal in the proper space and all that stuff. So down the road, if I come up with enough money, I can actually put a proper convertible top mechanism and all that in there and it will fit just like factory. So that's that. That stuff was, this that centerpiece wasn't bad. It was a uh, hundred and a half or something like that. These were, these were kind of a lot. They were 200 and 250 a side, which sucks. It was 500 bucks and I'm only gonna use this much worth of metal, but I can keep these panels. I'm sure I'll do another try five and fix, you know, whatever I gotta do. That's that. I got these trunk pads from a local guy actually, who I can actually return them and get my money back. He said, uh, this is the back of the trunk which is kind of actually fits under here, which is kind of rotted. It's got that pan. This panel here is a cross. And then this is the structure piece where the body mount actually bolts. So it's kind of, this is the ugly piece, but it's all the, all the structure. Um, they all sandwich together kind of under this area. So it's one, two, then three. Uh, originally when I was talking to him, I hadn't had the bumper off yet. But it's actually not nearly as bad as I thought, and I could probably fix the trunk piece, but this structure piece is completely rotted, so I might just use that from the bottom side. So I think these are a hundred bucks a piece, so the price is a hundred bucks. And then finally, essentially I got a half a quarter panel. Now, this was expensive. These were 200 or so, so what's that? Two, four, another five, so that's, uh, what's that, nine? And that's like 11. Those were a hundred and a half. So we're talking 15 or so hundred dollars of cheap metal, depending on what I use here. Uh, that's more than I paid for the car. <laughs> and I mean, I could have made some of this stuff. I could have screwed around and all that, but that's pretty time consuming. And ultimately 
I think this does a better job, especially since I'm documenting it. The car, it's a four-door, and we all know that. This, the serial number is going to say it, all those things, but it's as close to a two-door convertible as I think you can, you know, kind of financially get to. Anyways, this piece here, again, this has been sawzalled out at some point uh, for a patch panel, um, you know, so that'll be nice. These things go high enough, they're meant to kind of hide behind the trim, so we'll use that panel. This is, this is pretty rough and bent and all, I mean, anything is fixable, but it wasn't really for me, so I can slice that, hopefully right around the body line or, or behind the trim, weld that on, make it look kind of nice, put the trim back on, you'll never know. Up front, I gotta decide how much of the panel I wanna use. I really only need the bottom section, so I may just kind of go around there and over, and then I can keep the rest of the panel for another car, because we have the door jam and all that, and this little kind of section down there. So this actually could be used on that car, or Danny's car, or any 57. So I think I'm gonna try to keep as much of this panel for myself as possible, and use that down the road, because on a factory two-door, that panel rots out all the time, so you'll end up using it. I think that's kind of it, eh? That's how I spent all my money today. Who needs a mortgage when you have sheet metal? Anyways, I think I'm going to start taking this all apart. I'm not going to worry about the trunk. I want to get this top convertible piece on because I'm just itching for this thing to look like a proper convertible. I think step one, we're going to fit this piece, and then we're going to go off of that. So I'm thinking. I kind of what I want to do is, is cut the panel right on this edge and right on the edge there and I'll weld it and I'll have just that one little seam versus going right into the trunk and doing all that screwing around. At least those are my thoughts. We're going to get everything cleaned off. I might even take the deck lid off. We'll see if I want that on for fitment or not. I don't think it really matters. And uh, we'll start welding. i got to figure something out with this package tray because it's going to have to be trimmed out, I'm sure, to a certain extent. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. It'll be, uh, be fun for everybody involved. So I've been sitting around thinking about how I'm going to ruin all these brand new panels I just purchased. I think I have a plan. So this back section is a bit of a curb up, obviously, so it's sloped into the window. Well, as you can see, the convertible panel is dead flat. Um, I definitely want to join it right on this uh, area here. If I should leave it underneath. Oh, I guess I should look what I'm doing. See all that structure there? I want to keep that. Um, that's attached uh, to this kind of lip piece, so if I slice it right there, that'll be good. That then wraps under and goes kind of to in this section there. So I'm thinking if I slice this piece off, take the skin of it off, the structure will still be underneath, which would be good. Then I can decide how much of cause that under, under structure, while well, I'm losing it today, goes right into this package tray. This is where the panel is going to end. So if I slice it somewhere about like that-ish, and then if I uh, punch a bunch of holes in here, I can plug weld that to that. It'll have the under structure. This little top piece will be gone. We'll weld it across there. That'll be nice and sturdy. I don't think this should be just floating out in space there. So we'll cut it there. And then realistically, we'll probably cut it there and then again kind of there. Take this section out. Uh, whether I do that or not, I'm not too sure because that's where the obviously a convertible top would be. On a factory convertible, this piece is, I don't know if it's in the same location, but sure as heck a lot narrower. So that's, I think, what I'm going to do. On this side, I took the, the trim off. It's very simple, it just has these little things kind of pop in little holes. It won't fit because I have this uh, left of the pillar, which is good, I left lots of, lots of extra room. Uh, but again, that's going to want to kind of be up there, so I think I'll have to cut out this, uh, you know, where the window channel would be, and obviously this piece, and I can test fit that. So I think we're going to have a bunch of cutting. I'm going to get some of this uh, skin off the back, we're going to get the window channel out, we're going to get what's left of the rear post out, all ugly cut, then come in later and trim it all nicely, make it look good. Uh, this is just to get these panels all to kind of fit, because this is... Uh, you know, five or six hundred bucks worth of sheet metal. Well, it's 35 cents worth of sheet metal, but because it's precision stamped in China, uh, it costs a bunch of money. So yeah, we'll see if we can get that kind of going. I'd really like to see this fit in there, because this, this looks ugly. 
But this, this looks less ugly. Uh, so it already looks a lot better not having that windshield hump as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, I'm sure people are probably asking or thinking, like, why didn't you just squat welds out and take all this out? It's because I didn't. There's no real no real reason. I, I've always liked to leave as much factory sheet metal as possible, which includes this double wall, thick, you know, kind of trunk, you know, seal area, whatever. Um, so what I do is when I cut the corners, I left a little bit of extra meat, same with in the center. So that way it's going to butt up and be close. So I can give it a quick tack weld. Then I can just run the zip cut along the edge right on, like at a kind of a 45, right on where the, the curve would be. And I'll give it a few tacks that'll hold it. That'll be good. Um, right here, I got it right on the seam. So we're not going to weld anything on the side because that's where the other piece will come into play. At the front here, we can just kind of give it a few tacks in the front to hold it. Now, here, this is what's good. Look at this. This is, this is a factory. This has never been messed with, whatever. So it's got your stacked together sheet metal, the inner little bit of structure I took out, and that top piece is the quarter. Look at the amount of lead that's in there. I think that's more than an eighth of an inch, boys. 1957 Chevy. This was built on a Friday or what? So there's no amount of filler I can put in this thing that'll... Well, if I'm putting that much filler in, we got issues. I don't think I'll need that much. Anyways, battery's low. All the batteries and the grinders are low. Danny came out, we're making slop, well, she made Sloppy Joe's for dinner. Is sloppy Joe's Canadian only, but anyway, Sloppy Joe's for dinner. So we're gonna let the batteries charge. This is kind of, you know, I'm happy with where it's gonna be. So we might just put a, a couple of tap holes to hold it when I come back out. Otherwise, I'm gonna probably just slice out this uh, windshield channel and this post section just so nothing is uh, sticking up. And then we can start fitting the, uh, these panels right on there, deciding where I want to trim them and uh, start welding. Well, we are making progress. So, center piece is in, kind of left there. I did chop out the little, uh, as little as I can. I mean, obviously, this is all still the old stuff. Just enough for this panel fit. I did trim this panel down. So, we got that out, but kind of irrelevant because we're covering it up, right? So, get that kind of. This overhangs a fair bit. I have a bunch of pictures of uh, the way the trim goes here, and it's kind of wide, and then it kind of steps down into this, so I guess that's the way it's going to be. Really, we're just going to line it up with the peak, where it has that. I think I'm actually going to cut it right on the peak. That way, well, maybe actually what I'll probably do is on this side, so it'll be kind of hidden from bodywork, and I don't lose any of these tabs and stuff like that well right in there and well I guess once we get past it, it's kind of irrelevant where I weld it on I might just leave it kind of tacked into place because we're going to want to kind of cut this out and cover up well we got to cover this in anyway so this might work out pretty good zip it right in there while they're in get as much of the door as possible 
But look at this amount of filler it's got between the two panels. Like, they just kind of sandwich on top of each other. I don't know what one should be top and bottom. That might show me on the, uh, on the cutaway. Uh, I don't know, but look at that. My brain's not working good enough right now. So, yeah, we'll cut this section out, same thing, so we weld right on the seam. And honestly, I'll probably go ahead of here, but even if I want, I could probably... I need two hands. I'm filming with two hands. I'll probably go right across there. So we'll trim it kind of like that. Right there. Keep that little piece. I mean, we'll have one little section of filler there. We'll weld it in under this. I mean, we'll fill it and paint it, but in all reality, it'll all be covered by that little panel. Up in here, obviously, it's going to be ugly and stuff like that. Um, I might... What am I going to do there? I should weld this on just yet because I might take this door off. But that leaves lots in here. Lots of meat. I'm going to give her a couple tack welds to there. So the way the convertible actually works, it's got these giant honking kickouts for uh, like the side panels. And it has a really skinny seat, so the seat, the seat stops right in between. Or even more ever yet. But all your mechanism and rams are right here. And then the top folds down here, so there's actually no... Uh, like no support to the back, so it would be all kind of cut out. I don't know if there's maybe a brace that goes down. We'll figure that out too. I'll probably just leave it in on this car for now anyways, because we're going to have a fake cover on it, and this gives it all the same strength it had. And I'm all about having something that's pretty strong. So, I'm going to keep cutting here. I'll probably start tack welding things in, and just to kind of see what it's all going to look like. And we can always come back and trim edges and do stuff. I mean, the more I look at this, to be honest with you, it's kind of a, it's not a very nice stamping, it's kind of in and out, in and out, so uh, I might leave that loose. It'll come back and just cut that and weld that so it's it's kind of right flush and flat. But we're getting there. This makes me feel much better. It makes it really look convertibly with this big long piece here, don't you think? Don't you hate when you're making progress and it's like 10 o'clock at night and you run into a mechanical failure? So the trigger on the welder is no bueno. 
I mean, it's a super simple, like a little micro switch, just like a, like a nitro switch would be. I took it apart, I cleaned it, that's why I stopped filming for a little bit. Put all back to it, it was working fine, now it's not working fine. And if I just, you know, manually touch these wires together, every time it works. This just screws up, you gotta mess with it and jam with it, so... I think it's got a new one tomorrow or something. Anyways, so we got the back panel kind of in. I mean, it's, it's ugly, but it's in there. Clean that all up. Uh, we got the side piece on. Now, I didn't weld from where the door is forward. The door's barely hung on, and you know, I'm not sure if I'm going to take this door piece off or not, so I'm going to leave this extra. I might even just slice it right there, and then I can just weld that in a little bit, depending on where this wants to go, depending on what happens with the door and the posts and all that, but I mean, back here, I think we're looking pretty good. So this is what I was talking about. I mean, a huge part of it is going to be hidden by this trim. Now if I can put this trim back in. Gentle, buddy. Bear with me. I mean, that's just sitting in there. But all I'm going to do is just bodywork one seam. In here, I don't know what I'm going to do. I might actually just slit it and then butt those two together, I'm thinking, because there's a bit of this panel's higher than this panel, which looks like you're supposed to be lapped, but maybe not. So I'll split it right down the center and put them so they're flat. Oh, dog break. I just give an ugly couple of tacks, but I'll split it, put it level, weld it in, and then that's, I guess, for filler or lead or... I might put a little strip of steel in there and weld it proper. So we got that going on. We're all happy around here. This is the nice and tall. But, I don't know. I think it's, uh, it definitely has the convertible look versus, uh, so handy having one of these uh, sedans here. You can really see the, the difference in it. Very flat, but uh, very simple. I think it's going to work out great. So, I'm calling it there for tonight because this stupid welder is pissing me up. It's it's very frustrating when you're trying to tack it together and it's not working, not working, and trying to hold it down with a hammer or a screwdriver or whatever in spot, and it ain't working. So, see if they have one tomorrow. I'm sure it'd be like four bucks if they got it, which let's hope they do. Otherwise, I'm taking off one of their machines in the showroom. Uh, otherwise, I'll take it apart again and clean it. I, just, I feel like an idiot, the fact that I can uh, not make this work, but whatever. It's late anyways convertible uh, okay what's well, the next day um, got a new trigger for the welder put that on 50 bucks and that should have in stock I had to convince them to rob it off the uh, display seems like it works though um, I think what we're gonna do for this side so we got the other side all kind of tacked in for this side uh, we're, I want to get all tacked in as well I really want this car to just be literally tacked together as a convertible and then we'll come back around and weld the whole thing uh, solid once we get the rockers and floors and all that in it. I mean, that's no different than the side panels and everything. So I'm going to do this in kind of one long take. Uh, people are always asking to see me do the work. Well, you're going to get it. And uh, I'll explain a little bit as I go. I have no rhyme or reason the way I do things. I have zero formal training. As well, If you're new here, there you go. If uh, I've been around for a while, you obviously know that. So we'll, uh, we'll get given her. I'm just going to kind of match it up. I'm going to kind of rough cut this panel to where I want it. I'll put it on, I'll start cutting some stuff out. Initially the uh, the windshield kind of frame has to come out and then this uh, package tray. I was looking at some convertible pictures. I guess the rear seat must be ahead a little bit or something. It just seems like there's more room between this panel and the and the seat, but uh, whatever. It'll all be covered up with some sort of something. Oh, I thought I lost the screw for the welder. I'll uh, that in later. Got a little lazy. So we get that cut out, we'll test fit, we'll kind of start cutting. Uh, yeah, you can probably tell me in the comments I should be grinding stuff smooth and clean metal and all those things, but uh, well, it's already been done. panels up best I think they do. I'm gonna do that side. Right here, right there. This is where the key measurements come in.
Bam. So now, this sits flatter on a convertible than it does on a sedan, I guess. I don't know where these panels are. So, kind of put it about where we want. I'm going to trace it. Oh, i got to cut down here, actually, too. Idiot. Uh, so we're cutting down the center, obviously. Right where the trim's going to be. You can see where it's, well, the paint's good. Cut somewhere in there on that side. Change zip disks. I'm going to go through a bazillion doing junk like this. So zip disks and batteries. Keep full and charged. We got the piece where we want it. Well, trim to go where we want it. It's a little high over here. kind of cut it out buzz it around we're essentially kind of changing the shape a little bit obviously going from this kind of flat panel into this which didn't exist before car wasn't really meant for it so what I'm gonna do line up where I think it's gonna be trace the back ish face the sides ish be able to a little more on. Oh. Oh my god. I should say. I'm going to write it wrong here. This marker sucks. So what we're going to do is we're going to get just started so we can set the panel down in. I'll give it a few tacks and I'll kind of buzz it out. I might just cut it and see what happens. I guess so there's some structure in there trying not to cut right through it trying okay that should be okay now once you get kind of close the flap wheels your best friend start setting her in so you can't turn the zip disc as much as you might want and if you do you have a tendency to blow up in your face I like being pretty All right, welder on, welder is on, I should say. The trick is when you're tacking, not wearing a mask, close your eyes. Ooh, that trigger works too. Kind of working my way around here. 
anything you have available. Hold the metal in about the spot you want. So you might have to pry it up a little bit. So the center will match. Watch this little trick. So now we got the center flat. The end is too high. Push it down. Metal likes to bend. Not fit. We're not going nowhere now, and we're kind of committed. Well, never committed. But this is where she's going to be. So, give her a little, little haircut. So that ain't going nowhere. We're right flush. We got just a bit of a start right there. Put it back where you were. Oh. Tangle in the welder. So now this is obviously whoop, shooting up because we all have space under here, and there's nowhere for it to go down there. So what I'll probably just do a little billy but. Tack, tack. You ain't going nowhere. Is it just piece out? As we get started, the panel starting to fall into place. My hammer. Once we're done, we'll be able to get this piece of metal up underneath so it's in the trunk. I burn my hair all the time. Okay. Now the reason I stepped it off there. Oh, there's hogs of belly. Because it doesn't really matter anymore. We were originally trying to keep the cut in the center of the trim, which is accomplished. And now with the trim on, you won't even see that join whatsoever. So all we're going to do is just a little schmuck of bodywork there, and this is going to be, like, this is all lead and stuff <clears throat> from the factory. And we're going to have to fill in there, so no big deal. Now at the front, I haven't finished the other side, and I think probably kind of yeah, look what I did on the other side but this is the shape we want to kind of maintain this section here the old door out the where the pillar was so I think I just left it kind of loose eventually I'll probably come in and do the same thing cut all this out sink it in and use this metal in the door uh, but for now this door is only held on with like four or five tacks and may come off so I think what I probably did on the other one I welded it in I might cut it right there and I'll save these pieces and weld them on after the fact because uh, I have a feeling 
the rear quarter, the doors, wherever are gonna come off. Now, in the center, we're obviously up high. So, on the other side, I just kind of held them down. I think I'm gonna do on this one, I'm actually gonna zip it right down the center and uh, push so they're more level instead of being lapped. That side just seems a little high to me, so we'll experiment on this side and then uh, see what happens on the other side. You know what, before we do that, hold it in place with the welder. Why well, get a clamp when you have a welder, right? cut right up until the uh, the door jam got all that up so you get all the metal from the back side falls in the trunk and then obviously here it's boxed so that makes a lot of sense now that I thought about it so smart thinking Dan what she looks like. Ugly, just like I like them. So now we'll probably come back, you just kind of go around here with the flap wheel, clean that all up. Uh, just shoot down the bare metal, weld it all in. You see here it's got a bit of a hump to it, but uh, these two are joining, so I don't know if you're supposed to put a pile of filler in there. That seems like a lot. I kind of think I'll come back with a piece of steel and, and weld it in, but uh, We'll weld that, we have a bit of a peak, we'll knock it down with the hammer, it'll be flat, and then we'll be uh, just fine. Fine-ish anyways. I guess what I want to do with this edge here, and actually, you know what, I'll uh, take the camera off the stand and I'm going to show you what I want to do with some trim maybe. Or, if you guys have some ideas, I'd like to know. 
So this right here is the factory, I believe it's the rear window trim. Um, I have extra of this, I think. So I'll be able to kind of bend her in place. It obviously won't be proper. Well, if I cut this out, it might lay flat a little bit or make something myself with a stainless or whatever. And there's something that I'm gonna be able to kind of curve. Maybe I'll try making my own piece and I'll put some snaps on it and then we'll just kind of do something for the convertible piece. So it looks like it's a roadster. The seat has to be further ahead, eh? I know I'm talking to myself here, but somebody needs to tell me in the comments. It's probably gotta just be up there or something. Anyways, so I was just, I shut the camera off. That was 30 minutes to get that panel cut, kind of ground down, explain a little bit in. I don't know how long it's gonna be on this video, but there you go. Just so you know, if you're paying somebody or whatever, that would have been, you know, 50, 60 bucks and it's literally just started to be in. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind you'd pay someone like a full eight hours because uh, I'm a hack as you'd like to tell me in the comments but uh, to have that all ground down welded in flushed you know body worked and maybe ready for uh, for filler or for uh, primer or primer type thing so you gotta think 100 bucks an hour that's like 800 bucks it's your pricey on top of the ridiculous price of metal and you know I get it you probably could have made this piece huh you know, I, I'm not, I like getting stuff done fast. So if I can pay to get something right away, I do that. If you want to make yourself more power to you. Uh, and if you're paying someone to make it for you, you better have a water cool visa. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do now, once it laps up, I'll get this all kind of welded in, which will be a pile of welding, like a lot, a lot. We'll grind it all down and that's where I'm ending it for this video. So hopefully you enjoy all the work I'm doing. Okay, well, all the welding later. So I'm moving around, making spots, stuff like that. So I don't want to put too much heat in the panel, but stay nice and flat. I got no real worries there. Um, down in here, it's all full of lead, so I'll probably have to grind it out really good, and then I'll probably just put a piece in and weld it up. It's probably all mangled. Uh, came a little close to these clips, so I actually skipped a few spots. I might pull those clips out and then finish welding it, but whatever. Across the back is good, and wouldn't you believe it, right at the very end, I ran out of welding gas. So, toss out the truck, it's for tomorrow. But yeah. So now, all I have to do is everything. But uh, we're going to grind this all smooth or, you know, kind of whatever. Put the trim back on, see what it looks like, get everything cleaned off. And end this stinking video. I was thinking, for this little piece that's going to go around here, you know, either, um, I see guys use like that electrical conduit for radiusing wheel wells or I mean like a Carson top seem to do that so I was thinking you could bend that around and then cut it in half and then put it down to put snaps in it that might work uh, a stainless bar I've never worked with stainless I've welded it a few times just to practice but can I just put a bunch of pie cuts in there form it how I want weld it grind it then polish it and it would look nice right put snaps in it secure that down maybe 
because I've heard that the factory piece there is like 1500 bucks, which, uh, well, I'm not spending that. We're not spending one and a half times we spent the whole car on that. We've already spent that on sheet metal, which is ridiculous. But, uh, yeah, so we'll get this finished up, see what it looks like. I'm pretty stoked on it. Package tree looks ugly, but you gotta close your eyes on that. It looks pretty good. Factory Verbal sheet metal. Actually, Danny came out and she called it Hactory. We do a lot of Hactory around here. So, there you go. Um, I think I might slice this and I actually put these part of the doors or the whatever quarter sections at this point so they can maybe come on and off with the door. I'll think about that overnight and decide what I want to do. Tomorrow, I'm going to try and do rockers. I'm not going to lie, I actually haven't been on the garage for about four days in a row and I was wrestling that uh, frame around under this thing in the last video pulled something in my uh, stomach there and I've like an old man barely able to move the last few days so today's been the first day I felt okay and I'm just kind of working at you know waist tight or whatever so I want to do the rockers because that's where all the strength will be see how that goes tomorrow maybe trunk pan or uh, or the quarter because I can lift it up and be easy on my old self but uh yeah, look at that. Man, that looks good. I don't know if it's money well spent, but sure is money spent. It'd look way better with the deck lid on. Uh, this deck lid's hammered. I think I have another one in the basement that's in better shape. So I might try and drag that out and, and uh, test fit it on there. See what she looks like and go from there. But that's it for me. Thanks for watching, as always. Let me know what you think of it. I'm loving the comments. I mean, uh, I don't know. It's a convertible convertible it's what i can afford i'm so stoked to drive this thing so uh i think i should be able to bang out a couple videos pretty quick as long as my body holds up but uh, one video of rockers one video of quarter panel welded on and then i'm still waiting on the gd floor but once i get the floor in then i mean uh shouldn't be too much work because the front ends brand new brakes all that kind of junk amazon showed up today with all the brake lines and everything well a roll of brake line which i'll make work we got miscellaneous motors and transmissions we're going to have to figure out. I'm sure the drive shaft. And then I just got to deal with the rock auto order for some rear brakes and kind of odds and ends. Got a wiring harness for it. I mean, there's still lots and lots and lots and lots and lots to do. But uh, a ride around the block I don't think is that far in the future. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.